Hello everybody, I'm Godot Guru, and today we're gonna add the third person character to our GTA game in Godot. Okay, so let's start by just getting ourselves some kind of character, and I'm gonna use this little one from itch.io. As you can see, there are many body types and color variants in this pack. It also comes with the formats we need, and it's completely rigged, so we can already use it for animations. Then after you open it, just import the FBX and texture folders into your Godot game. And the reason why I chose the FBX format is because we need it for the animations and the GLTF won't really work for it. And I'll also just rename it to characters. And I'll also create a folder for the animations, just like that. Now I really like to get my animations from Mixamo. It's a really nice website with a bunch of free animations and characters. After you log in, this is what you see. You might have another character, but it doesn't really matter. And you have a bunch of animations. And you can even search for them right here. Now one thing about the animations is that if we look at our characters, we have a fat body type, then we have the normal ones, and then the strong ones. Now it doesn't really matter between the man and the woman, and also not the variations, this ABC right here, only the type. And for every single one, we'll need to do the entire animation process again, because if you don't, then the animation will look kind of weird, so you have to do it like that. I'm going to use only the normal one. Now in order to actually apply the animations specifically to this model, then you need to get back to Mixamo, and then click on Upload Character, and then you can either select or drag and drop the character file, just drag it there, and it will work. Now it's processing it, and it's finally done, and looks pretty good. So now let's press Next, and let it change the character, and as you can see, we now have the character right here. And if we press on any animation, then you can see, now the animation is on our character, just like that. You can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel, and move around by pressing the scroll wheel. And we also have a bunch of other navigation features, just mess around with it. Now the first one I'm going to add is an idle animation. So we'll just go to the search bar and type idle. Now there are many animations, and there are some like this one. As you can see it might look fine here, but if you look at the character, the hand is kind of clipping through him. So uh, I really like uh, this one. It doesn't clip through anything and it kind of looks like, you know, a gangster and everything. So I'm going to use this one. Then just go and download it right here. And you're going to select it without the skin. Then just download. Then the next one we need is some kind of rock animation. And I found this animation to look pretty good for the um, gangster aesthetic. But as you can see, it's also moving, so let's enable in place, because the movement is going to happen inside of the game. And again, just download and everything just like that. Then you'll also need a run animation. I chose this one because it looks kind of funny. Just make sure to again enable in place like that. And the last one is just a jump animation, and we need something that jumps up and down. So I chose this one. Again, looks really exaggerated and really fits the theme. And that's it. These are all of the animations that we need. Now inside of Godot, just press on the animations folder. And then just import all of the animations just like that. Now for each animation, we are going to just open it up. And then under the animation player, you will have the Mixamo underscore com. Just click on it. And right here in the settings, make sure to set the loop mode to linear. The only one that doesn't need it is the jump because it will happen only once. And then enable save to file and set the path right here to the animations path and just call it idle, essentially like the name of the animation. And I'm going to add a capital N because this is for the normal body type. And then just save and re-import again. And you'll find it right here and make sure to do it for every single one. After you're done, then you can just delete all of the FBX files because you don't need them anymore. By the way, I called the run animation run and the walk animation walk instead of walking and running because I'm too lazy for that. Now go again to the characters and I'll just add the normal man. Then after you add him to the scene, just right click and make him local and right click again and save it as a branch. I'm just gonna call it player and save it like that. And then just open it in the editor right here and you'll have the player window just like that. Now the mesh will be all the way over there because we place it somewhere in the world. So we'll just go and just reset the transform right here and it will be fine. Now go ahead and change the name of the root to player 
and also right click and change the type to a character body 3D right here. Then add the collision shape and set the shape to a capsule and set the transform on the white one. And make sure to not mess around with the name of this node and this node. You can only change it to this one. I just call it mesh and that's it. Because if you mess around with this, then the animations won't work. Now right click on the root and add an animation player. And then click on animation right here. And then create a new animation. Doesn't matter the name. And then go to manage animations and delete that animation. Now go and press on this folder icon. And then in the animations tab, just select all of the animations you made and open them up. And then click OK. And now we can go to every single one and just play it. And it will work just like that. And also for the run and for the jump too. And it won't loop just like we did. Now in order to give some kind of color to the player, then just click on the mesh. And in the surface material override, just go into the texture folder that we made and select some kind of palette. I'm just going to use the first one and then just drag it to the material override and it will give him a material with the albedo texture just like that. The next thing we'll do is to add a camera. So right click on the player and add a node and call it camera holder and make sure to place it roughly at the head height. I chose to put it at 1.6. Then add a raycast and set the target position to 0 on the x, 0 on the y, and minus 2 on the z. And then add a camera inside of it. Set the rotation on the y to 180 and the position on the z to minus 2. Then in order to have the mesh look where we are going, we need to click on it. And in the transform, make sure to enable top level. Then reset the rotation and set the x to minus 90. And then reset the position and set the Y to minus 0.05. And also add under the player another node and call it mesh look. And now we can go ahead and attach script. And again, just call it player. But first, let's set up some inputs. So go to the project settings. And in the input map, just add all of these inputs. You can see now all of the key bindings I added. Feel free to use these ones, but you can also choose whatever you want. And then you can just close. Now the default script that Godot gives us is pretty nice, but it won't really work for a third person controller. So you'll have to just paste the code I made, which you can find in the description. Now this will take quite a long time to explain how I did all of this, and I'm pretty slow typer, so I won't be able to really type it with you. But if you really want a deep explanation on all of this, then let me know. And next time I'll add a script to something, then I'll make sure to explain it too. But you do have some really nice variables right here if you want to change anything. Now that our player is done, we can go back to the city. And as you can see, the player is kind of inside of this building because we just reset this transform. So let's move it around. And as you can see, we can't really do it because the mesh is top level. So it doesn't really matter where we move the player. So it won't really move the mesh. But when you run the game, then it will move with it. For now, just count this as the mesh. But as you can see, it's a bit too big for this world. And what I found is that scaling the city times 5 is a pretty good size to make it look okay. And in order to do that without making it all over again, is to just go up and add some kind of node. I just call it city holder. And then select all of the things in your city. And then just drag them under the city holder. And then click on the city holder. And in the transform, just set the scale to 5. And everything will scale just like that. And make sure to position the character again because it won't really look right. And the name won't update here. So I just rename it back to player again. I forgot to mention that I actually didn't show how to add the world environment and the directional light. So I just delete them for a second. And in order to add them, you can just click right here on these three dots. And just click on add environment to scene. And add sun to scene. And that's it. So now that everything is ready, we can just click play. And the character just fell through the floor. Now that happened because we don't have any collision. And the thing is that the collision for buildings like that is really hard to make. Like you can just go and make the city holder just change the type to a static body 3D. So it will have collision. And then just add a bunch of collision shapes. And let's say that you just chose a box shape for it. 
and let's say that you also like scale it up and everything and yeah you can already see it's pretty hard to do and it won't be all that accurate and areas like this we need another collision so it's pretty bad but if you have like really complex models then you will need to do it otherwise the game just won't be able to really run so let's just delete this collision shape and what we actually need to do is to just close all of the other folders and then in the city folder make sure to just go over every single one let's say this building a open it and then on this mesh right here go and just enable physics like that and it will generate this little collision shape just like that and it will be as accurate as possible as you can see it doesn't miss anything if you want there are also other types like you can just add a convex mesh which will be pretty bad and an even simpler one and the one we're usually using is the tri mesh which is just the automatic one then we also have the box which is pretty good and will work for most things but again it's not all that accurate and then some other types but again we're just going to use the automatic one which is the tri mesh and then just re-import and as you can see it has collision now and you will have to do it for every single mesh in this game the only ones you don't need to do it to is the cars because we're going to cover the cars in the next video and they have some more advanced things because they are actually interactable so for everything that is interactable we're going to need to add some kind of custom collision so only for them don't do it anything else then make sure to add that automatic collision just like we did with these two and if you just go to this space right here then you can see it's already just a box so you can go into the base and instead of using the automatic one which creates a bunch of unnecessarily triangles then you can just go to the shape and select box and it will be kind of weird like that but again you can just go ahead and scale it down i'll set it to something like 0.1 and you also need to move the position up to 0.05 and now it's really good but it's a bit of a tedious task so use it only if you really need and again just re-import like normally and i'll see you when i'm done okay so i'm finally done and as you can see there are many triangles in the scene apart from the cars which you can see don't have anything and now we can just click play again so we can just look around the character like this with the mouse and then move with the inputs I gave it to every single direction and it will go smoothly like that and I can even select to walk if I want and it will look like this and I can also jump whenever I want and again everything here is completely interactable like I can just go right here on this bench and just stand on it for no reason and even jump from it and again the cars are going to be in the next video so stay tuned for it so we don't just go right through them like that now this has been quite a long video but I hope you made it to the end and that you enjoyed watching it and as always don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!